Hello and welcome back. Uh, for those of you who might have just joined us, uh, my name is Daniel Lanyon, Editor-in-Chief of AltFi. Um, today, for our final session of the day, we have an absolutely fantastic um, company, Nutmeg, uh, one of the uh, original uh, robo-advisors, um, and we have its CEO, Neil Alexander, joining us. Hello, Neil. Hey, Daniel. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. How are things with you? Marvellous, thanks. Really good. Excellent. Well, for those who, who aren't um, familiar with Nutmeg, uh, as I mentioned, it's the original UK uh, robo-advisor or, or digital wealth manager, uh, launched in 2012. Um, Neil, you joined uh, originally as the CFO, the Chief Financial Officer, I believe, in 2017. Um, previous to this, you, you were uh, working for secretsales.com, uh, which was sold to uh, Woucher, I believe, dur during that period. Um, so just to kick things off, something we've, we've been, uh, talking about quite a lot today, um, with, with all of our previous sessions, um, is whether, um, we can anticipate a sort of a wave of, of fintech m &A consolidation. Um, what's your views on that? Uh, it's a good question. So, um, <clears throat> I think we need to start by looking at the traditional um, players in our industry. Um, they've been slow to develop the technology. Um, in some cases, they've failed to develop the technology and they've been slow to make decisions and acquisition. But now, with the situation we're in, um, your previous speaker, Charlotte, mentioned how seamless the fintechs have transitioned into the fully remote working. So there's been no interruption in many of our businesses, including Nutmegs. So I think some of the traditional players will now take another look at it and and can reconsider their build or buy decision and perhaps revisit those buy decisions. So um, there could be some activity from that point of view. And of course, even before uh, we came into the pandemic, we were already seeing some businesses starting to struggle. And we saw people like UBS pull out of the robo-advisor market, Click and Invest pulled out, Moolah closed, Tiller closed. So it was never an easy business to be in. And um, with the onset of the coronavirus, then I think uh, it's going to get even tougher. Um, Nutmeg as a business, we're very fortunate. We've got some excellent shareholders behind us. We're um, fully funded. Uh, we're the fifth largest digital wealth manager in the UK, 85,000 customers. So we're well positioned to weather the storm and um, we'll be keeping a watching eye on what happens in the market as things roll on. Very interesting. So... Um, as I mentioned, you, you sort of fairly recently took over as CEO. I think it was at the very end of 2019, and I'm sure um, you know the the current situation is probably not what you're anticipating for for the first quarter of the year. Um, but can you just give us a an idea about how um, you know how you've reacted as a business? Um, how has Nutmeg fared with with remote working? Um, you know, how has that experience been as a as a very new newly minted CEO of the business. Yeah, yeah, I, I recall the boards back in 2019 saying, why don't you become the CEO of a digital wealth management business? It'd be brilliant fun, you'll really enjoy it. Okay, so here we go. Um, so in terms of the business, how have we weathered it? So uh, Nutmeg's always been a digital business and as an employer and the way that we work, we've had a lot of flexible working anyway. People work remotely, you know, often during the week. So uh, when this all came in, that transition for us was smooth. I think uh, an important element for us was the communication side of things, which is absolutely vital. So uh, dispersing the entire office, um, you need to make sure you keep those connections together. It's quite a sociable office. So like everybody else, we're using Zoom and Slack and WhatsApp to make sure we're staying in touch. So we're promoting that contact amongst the teams with weekly all hands and so forth. So people stay in touch with the business. But the key bit was, of course, making sure we're staying in touch with our customers. And uh, in that respect, we really ramped up our communication. So we're always doing a lot of content anyway. We believe strongly in educating uh, our customers and potential customers. So we ramped up that education. We also uh, started webinars with our CEO, CIO, James McManus, who also became CIO in early January. He's loving that choice as well. Um, so we opened up our webinars to our customers, invited them to come in with questions so they could understand the way that our investment team, our investment professionals were thinking about the markets. Um, so there's, yeah, the, the key thing has been the communication side of things. Interesting. And uh, you know, is that what you would broadly give as advice to other uh, business leaders and entrepreneurs you know, in, in the FinTech world? Um, you know, 
is there anything else maybe you'd add as, as you know, um, how to, to get through this, this difficult time? Uh, again, well, the communication is definitely a key thing. I think, uh, there's some hard decisions people have to make at this point in time as well. Um, but you know, need to make them as well informed as possible. So it's still important to take time out within the business. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of Zoom calls, but you've got to take time out with your, your key team, sit down and actually think about where, where the business is going. How does this impact on the business? I mean, for sure, for Nutmeg, we had our plans all laid out for this year. Everything's going great guns. I mean, we still are actually growing. We're still in that fortunate position, but we're definitely thinking about how can we change the business plan a bit? Where do we need to become more efficient? And it's helping us to drive more efficiencies in the business as well. So um, as chaotic as things may feel and as stressful as things may feel, you've got to make sure you, you take the time to step back, take a breath and go, okay, right, what are the opportunities here? Because there's always opportunities, particularly for fintech businesses, where I think um, is a massive opportunity. The, uh, what's happening here, uh, I reckon we will see, is it's accelerated that move on to online for a lot of people maybe hesitated about managing their financials on the finances online it's pushed them over and they're now having to do it and they're becoming more familiar with it so um it's about taking the time to plan but also look for where those sweet spots are and where the opportunities are mm, interesting we heard uh, earlier from from adam dobbs ceo of uh, free trade um who mentioned that um you know perhaps unsurprisingly um, it's been a, a bit of a boon for, for that business. Um, a lot of first time investors seeing depressed valuations in shares and thinking, you know, this is a good time to, to start um, building some sort of uh, portfolio of, of investments. Um, has it been similar for you guys? Obviously, you are different in the sense that you offer um, sort of portfolios, ready made portfolios. Um, now you know clearly in in any sort of market stress situation it's um there's always a potential people want to uh sell down assets you know uh, move into cash that sort of thing um or just you know take money out to fund their living expenses um how has the i guess first big um market crisis fared um from the point of view of um in you know your your customers your investors yeah. So, th so first of all, I think f free trade's um, a different business to us, as you said. I would compare them more to the likes of Robin Hood or Hargreaves Lansdowne, where there it's a it's a place for people to go and pick their stocks, um, and pick their funds, and trade in and out. Uh, for us, Nutmeg as a business, we're a discretionary wealth investment manager. So. We have a team of professionals. We keep them locked up in a safe place and they're looking at the markets day in, day out, understanding what's or trying to understand, to be fair, because nobody really understands at the moment, but trying to understand how the macroeconomic factors are moving and designing the portfolios around that and then managing the portfolio. So as you probably know, we have a fully managed portfolio and a fixed allocation. On the fully managed, they will be doing regular changes to those portfolios. So um when customers come to us, they come to us because they want to benefit from that knowledge, which you can't normally access with kind of the traditional wealth managers. You, you need to have a lot of money to access it there. So they come to us, they open their account and uh, go through the suitability, identify their, their risk level, and then they leave it to our team to manage their investment for us. So we don't advocate stock picking at all. In fact, um, academic research shows us if you try and stop pick ultimately you're never going to beat the market so we don't we don't try and beat the market it's all about long-term investment on a mm. on a globally diversified multi-asset uh, basis and in terms of how the oh sorry daniel i, just, I was just gonna say yeah with, with with customers you know obviously there's there's you know there's going to be that sort of new pressure maybe um you know and I, I was just interested to know how how um, you know, have you picked up new customers? Have you, you know, has there been anything you've done to, differently? Uh, so, we, we, as I said, we ramped up the communication. We we um, provided more access essentially to the investment team so people could ask questions in terms of how our customers have reacted we do spend a lot of time educating people about the benefits of holding for the long term this if you're investing it's not a, a you know it's not really an overnight process it's like a multi-year process uh, and I, in the way our customers reacted definitely we saw an increase in some withdrawals but it wasn't people clearing out their accounts entirely it was people drawing down a bit um Possibly they had some cash flow needs they needed to make, or maybe um, they wanted to come out of the market a little bit. Um, so we saw that happening, but largely we haven't seen a big churn in our customers. Um, we keep talking to them, we reassure them. 
uh, our customer service is always there if they need to talk to anyone. And um, so it's been fairly steady. And um, people have continued depositing with us as well because, you know, in when you're trying to build your investments, it's really important that you keep dripping money in as, as frequently as possible within, you know, your available means. Interesting. Um, just a, a, a quick aside to say to the audience that um, you can absolutely ask a question um, in the chat um, function. Um, and obviously, we do have um, a live poll running as well. So please do cast your vote in that. Um, but um, you know, I'm just really keen to, to turn to open finance, which, um, as we covered in, um, I think, two sessions ago, is obviously this sort of expansion of the open banking uh, idea and technology to other areas of, of financial services. And um, you obviously have just recently um, launched a partnership with Yolt, um, an open banking app, which um, allows, I think, uh, your users to see their investments within the Yolt app. How do you think open finance will affect um, sort of the digital wealth management space um, or the savings and investment space? Is it something you as um, a team are, are sort of bullish on? Yeah, I mean, it's super exciting. It's all, you know, the, the more transparency you can provide people uh, regarding their wealth, the better. So yes, we've launched with Yacht. We've also launched with Emma and Money Dashboard. So we're trying to make our information, our customers' information available to them where they want it. Um, financial wellness, I think, is going to become a bigger and bigger topic, particularly off the, off the back of this pandemic. It's probably given people a course to really stop and think about what their financial situation is uh, and, and understand how much they should have in savings or investments and so on. So open banking is really going to help not just Nutmeg, but other fintechs and hopefully some of the traditional players as well provide their customers with the insight and the information they need. Um, we've also, even though it's all been uh, pandemics, we've done those launches, we'll be launching open banking payments as well, both on web and app, and that's coming out very shortly, again, to make life easier for our customers if they want to pay in or withdraw. Um, and we continue to build out our tools to help customers understand where they sh how they should be managing their money, how they should be planning for the long term. So it can only be a good thing. I mean, the government has tried it. They tried to build out the pension dashboard. That didn't really happen. And uh, I think a vast majority of adults in the UK will end up having something like 11 jobs and therefore probably 11 pensions. Uh, open banking and open finance hopefully will mean that uh, outside of the government dashboard that we can help to really provide that information to customers and other people so they can start to consolidate their pensions as well, which is really important. Mm, interesting. Um, so longer term, um, I, I'd like to, to sort of quiz you on two things. So one um, is obviously uh, international expansion um, has been on, on your roadmap, I think, for, for a while. Um, you know, I think you are already um, have a, an operation um, in Asia and Hong Kong, I believe. Um, how has uh, COVID-19 sort of affected international expansion? And then secondly, um, could you sort of talk through how it's changed customer acquisition and I guess um, the, you know, the, the, the broad revenue strategy of the business? Um, you know, I, I, I mean, just as a, just to sort of give that a bit of flavor, I mean, I, I feel like your ads were the first sort of fintech ads I saw on the tube, for example, um, presumably your, um, you're looking at other avenues but sure so um in terms of international expansion so yeah we launched in asia um in early 2019 we launched with fubon bank so they're actually um a shareholder in the business as well and that enabled us to provide our investment expertise into the asian market is taiwan specifically um it's been, it was a fantastic opportunity for us as a business to really build out our B2B proposition and some, and to learn some lessons with, quite frankly, a friendly partner, someone you could learn those lessons with. Um, business is going really well. Uh, it's always fascinating the different dynamics in different markets. So there's, there's always things to learn. In terms of dealing with uh, international expans expansion under COVID-19, well, we're quite frankly, we're not doing any international expansion under COVID-19. We will have to wait for things to settle down. But in the meantime, uh, we do continue to look at building out our B2B business. So we are, we'll have, we're continuing discussions, not only internationally, but also at home in the UK. So we see there's huge opportunities there. And then mm. in terms of acquiring customers, yep, we, um, 
we're I think we're fairly famous in well in certain circles for running tube card ads and uh, we started running them for tax year end and then it stopped but I have someone did send me a picture from the tube the other day they're still on there and I think we're not paying for them at the moment so that's great nice. so the, for, the, for the poor <laughs> souls who actually have to go on the tube at the moment I'm sure it's not top of their mind so we uh, we've moved away from our um our tube ads and uh we're focusing much more on the digital at the moment but we're focusing, focusing even more again on that communication and education. So as much live content as we can do and, and with regular updates. Very interesting. Um, got a couple of questions from the audience. So we'll just go to those um, now. Um, so this is from uh, Vladimir uh, Dimitrov. How does Nutmeg balance capability requirements between markedly different segments? Um, mass consumers versus, uh, I guess, sophisticated high net worth investors. Um, I think I remember hearing that you do have some, you know, I guess what could be considered high net worth investors, people with with circa a million pounds um, in in a nutmeg portfolio. Um, you know, are you a are you a wealth manager for for all, um, or or you know, will you sort of concentrate on that on that sort of uh, mass uh, market? Well, Vladimir, it's a it's a fantastic question, and it's. Um... It's one of the things that's often misunderstood about Nutmeg as a business. So our customer base isn't just millennials, which is it's often thought to be the case. In fact, we have a huge range of customers. We have customers from 18 up to almost 100. In fact, we have younger customers now because we launched the Junior ISA this year. So we obviously, I think our youngest customer was about a day old. Um, <laughs> the average age is around about 39, actually. And 60% of our customers have got investment um, experience. I think um, it's never easy trying to serve quite a wide range of um, customers, but we have huge transparency in our investment process. So for the more experienced investors, they can really delve into what investments are in their portfolios and dig into that and understand that. Um, and they appreciate that as well. They appreciate that transparency, that level of detail. And obviously what we believe is that is that a really um reasonable cost and we do serve high net worth individuals as well so we don't we would never hold ourselves out to be able to serve every single need of a high net worth individual but we see ourselves as for sure being able to be part of their real core portfolio generating what we think are very good returns at a very good rate and providing with the transparency and also the ease of kind of coming into nutmeg and and leaving nutmeg as well so and with the content we try and strike a balance there so we provide a lot of education so you can come find content on the nutmeg website that's really um for the early investors and experienced investors and similarly if you start if you dig into some of the investor blogs that they get really quite technical so we we try and serve all of those um all of those markets hmm, very interesting um, we've already touched on international expansion, but just a question here from Tom Shapira. Um, your your focus is it more at the moment uh, UK sort of growth, um, your core market, um, or are you sort of you know still as geared to to international expansion in markets like Asia? Um, so yeah, so we have um, we have investors from Taiwan on and uh, from Hong Kong. So the kind of Asia expansion is always on our list as it were um we we've got live conversations at the moment in the uk um which are very exciting and potentially could yield some very interesting results for nutmeg in terms of the european side of things there is a small issue we nobody says it anymore the b word it's now the c19 word but there is the b word so we kind of need things to settle down there before we uh um finalize any plans for sort of european expansion but uh we continue to grow our channels in the uk so it may be interesting for some people watching this to know that we actually provide bespoke portfolios for two of the large four accountancy firms. So there's other kind of B2B channels that we do as well. Okay, very interesting. Um, so um, just another quick question from the audience. Uh, what sort of companies or sectors do you invest in personally? Um, are there any companies um, that you didn't invest in that you wish you had? I guess that's, I guess that's more sort of talking about you know, sort of your own personal portfolio, but um, you know, do you, you you obviously, I'm sure, have a nutmeg portfolio. Um, do you do you sort of actively manage that yourself, or? Well, I think if I if I sat on here and said, oh yeah, I, I pick stocks, that would be completely wrong, <laughs> uh, and I don't pick stocks at all, actually. Um, mm. So any any long term investment I do, I do in my nutmeg portfolio, and I entrust it to our, our nutmeg. Uh, 
investment specialists. Um, I really believe, as do everybody who works at Nutmeg, in the way that we structure our portfolios. We really believe in passive investing. It makes it as low cost as possible um, and is, you know, gives you a great chance of, of making a great return over time. And apart from that, I've got two kids and two dogs, so it's really tricky to get the spare cash to invest. <laughs> Um, so just a bit, uh, a bit of a curveball question, but, um, you know, as, as the CEO of a, of a large fintech business, uh, we're really interested to know what you think are the sort of breakout um, financial technologies of this crisis and who is benefiting because of them. Um, obviously, you know, we, we talked about um, new investors coming, coming onto the scene, you know, seeing, seeing the market dip as, a, as an opportunity. Um, but what do you think are the sort of breakout um, financial technologies at the moment? I'm not so sure it's about breakout technologies, actually. I think it's about the acceleration of the adoption of the technologies. I mean, maybe something will appear out of this that none of us spotted, but I really do think it's the way that um, consumers have been forced to go online um, where previously they may have hesitated. So you even see it with the high street banks who are now putting out videos so that they can help their customers to download the app or to log on to online banking. So you're seeing that happen. So... Um, yeah, I don't think it's a breakout technology, but I do think it will be a significant mm. shift in consumer mindset, which for the fintechs can only be a great thing. Mm. Okay, very very interesting. Um, you know, that sort of sort of answers um, um, partially um, another question we we've been asking all of the, our CEOs um, speaking at the uh, the summit today. Um, the lasting impact of COVID nineteen um, uh, in the fintech sector. Um, you've obviously talked about the acceleration of of digitization. Um, do you think there'll be any other sort of really pertinent, lasting impacts? Um, so I think it's yeah. the yeah. it's the case that um, I think I mentioned earlier that people will be much more aware now of what their financial needs are, or maybe they'll be much more aware of the fact they don't actually have a plan for their financial well-being. Um, I think it's something like twenty five percent of UK adults don't have any savings at all. Um, and in these times, people are going to sit up and start to think about, well, how do I plan for the long term? So maybe first of all, it's how do I plan to get a buffer? So if there's some job uncertainty, I can I can work through that. And then maybe now it's going to uh, encourage people to also think about their long term savings, i.e. their pensions. And how do I go about growing my pensions? Um, we're definitely going to see the move to online. I think also from our point of view, there's going to be a reduction in the skepticism that possibly Nutmeg and some, maybe some other fintechs have faced. So traditionally, it's said you had to have a branch on the high street to go banking. We already know that's not the case anymore. We see a massive explosion in online banking and apps. I think it accounted for something like three quarters of bank transactions in 2019. It'll be bigger after that. And in terms of the traditional wealth management industry, where previously advisors always said you need to have a face to face meeting, well, they've for sure had to rethink that. And um, mm, and I think they'll start yeah. to understand that, you know, having a video call is almost as good as face to face. And it certainly is a lot cheaper to run it that way. So um, uh, all the businesses and probably most of your speakers will have said about this, you know, looking at how you actually run your business will become a focus as well. Do you need expensive offices in Mayfair? Or like Nutmeg, can you have cheap offices in Vauxhall? I don't know. <laughs> um, very nice offices. I've been, I have been to them. Um, <laughs> but um, so there's just another quick question from the audience, uh, which I think is a good one. Um, new features that might be coming along, uh, maybe in the next couple of years, that you know you want to sort of add on to the to the proposition for for your users. Um, obviously, the, we talked about open finance and and sort of bringing together um, different services from different companies. Mm. But are there any particular features you think will be added um, for, for Nutmeg soon? Yeah, so I always have to be careful whenever anyone asks me about a roadmap that uh, I don't say <laughs> what I shouldn't say and go back and uh, get the, the engineering team beating me up. But um, for sure, open banking opens a lot of doors. And it also for, it will provide a foundation for us so to build out even more financial planning tools for customers and a bit back to sort of Vladimir's question earlier, that there's different flavors of tools as well. Some of our customers just need something really simple to help them work out how much they should spend on a monthly basis. But as you kind of think more about your investment journey and more about what you need longer term, we'll be providing tools that help people to, to really build out a lifetime view on their financial planning. So that's the way we see it going. We want to 
continue with what we're always trying to do and it's digitize that financial advice um, process that so many people either can't afford to go through or are too afraid to go through. So more and more, we want to digitize that for people. And that's one of the key things that you'll see emerging from Nutmeg over the coming months and years. And that, that, that's a, it's a long-term play, but we're, we're working as fast as we can on it. Okay, very interesting. Um, I think that's all our, all our questions. Um, very, very interesting to chat, Neil. Um, lots of interesting nuggets in there. And um, obviously, hugely appreciate your time. I think we're going to be um, switching back uh, to get the results of our poll very, very shortly. So um, thank you very much for joining us, Neil. Um, Daniel, thanks soon. very much. Thanks very much for the invite. Thank you.